Hey guys, for the extra Sunday content, as well as bonus weekly content on top of that, go to our Patreon link in the description and find the Black Kluge tier or higher and subscribe. Um, no, uh, I noticed that Howard always mentions, like, why does he always mention, like, race and something? Like, that's why my first phone call to him ever was, like, it's a subtle racism. Like, why did he mention that all her assistants were black and, like, hmm, and you didn't find anybody else? Hmm. But I think Cyrus is making the point that Howard made it into a black-white issue. Is that correct, Cyrus? Yeah, because even when I call over something that's not about race, he says, Cyrus, you're a black caller, right? Like, why can't I just be Cyrus the caller? And I don't. So do you sometimes you need, well, you don't need a therapist because you don't need answers. You're happy all the time. You walk around happy with Brad and those plays and sucking each other's dicks, (laughs) and you couldn't be happier. Maybe dick sucking is what I what? need to do. <laughs> Let me see your dick. Try it? Have <laughs> no, you tried it? No, I haven't. Well, maybe it's you might find thing. happiness. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. Who knows? Did that happen to you, though? Do you fall in love on set? Because it is an aphrodisiac. You I know, talk, was you getting getting into music and guitar and all that stuff? Was that some kind of therapy because you didn't have your father? So the guy who asked you out the other day on okay. the bicycle, he was cute and everything, right? Yeah. But we said no. We didn't go out with him. Tell that fucking, tell that fat, uh, tell that fat fucking cunt Robin to shut the fuck up. She can't stop mentioning that other fat cunt Bubba. They're both fat cunts that need to die in a fire. And when I think about your early life, I thought that you would be the guy who would be filled with anger and resentment because you lost your mother at 14. I always say this, how are you so kind and loving and not bitter about that experience? Did you graduate college or what? Just answer the question. Don't don't, don't make fun of me. Did you you graduate college? I went to the Regent Street School, uh, post technical School of Architecture in London. Five years. And you didn't graduate? Uh, well, hang on. Let me go ahead. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> What's your brush? <laughs> hey, I'm not David Gilmore. You're not the yellow man. You're a fucking asshole who's trying to get under my skin. Oh, no, but I just, dude, I've been following you from the beginning. I don't care. Stop following me. Yeah, you don't care. That's your brush. That's right. I don't care. I don't give a shit about you. Fuck off. Get some new material. Fuck you. Fuck off. Fuck off. Cancel your subscription right now. Cunt. Baba Booey. Later. Baba Booey, your asshole. Oh, my goodness. My daughter, one of my daughters is fluent in Spanish. Yeah. And, uh, oh, my God, it's such a turn on. When she, when I say, I'll say, can you go up to somebody and speak? I, I, you know, like if I see a Hispanic person, I go, go, go up and talk to them in Spanish. She goes, oh, Dad, you know, I, I please, I said, it, 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 it's, it's so fantastic. So she goes up there, blah, 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 and they go, blah, 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 and I go, oh. Welcome, everybody, to QF, a podcast about Howard Stern. I'm Jim Fix, a.k.a. Fillmore, and we're covering the Hurricane Sandy saga. This is volume two. Sam's in the studio as well. How are you, my dear? Hi, guys. Um, Oh, sorry. My mic was a little weird. Um, I'm good. It's so weird. We're covering Hurricane Sandy, and currently Buffalo is starting to get its first... uh, First big snowstorm of the year. <laughs> yeah, in episode one, we, volume one rather, we we talked a little bit about disasters we've gone through, like declared national disasters or regional states of emergency, that kind of thing. Yeah, and ours is a state of emergency right now. So yeah, we were talking about our own personal like situations where we've been in weather emergencies and what have you. And then we had one guy. I won't say his name because I don't remember exactly who he was, but he deleted his comments on Patreon. And this isn't a like a try to get back at him via the episode, but he was saying things like, how hard is it to plug in a generator? In other words, he was taking Howard's side. And I don't understand it. Like if you're if it's not about it it was you don't know. Now, you know, after the fact what the storm was and that they didn't get hit as badly as some places did. But you didn't know that at the time. That's kind of the point. Well, there's also risks, especially when there's flooding and snow and everything. I know like they just went through Hurricane Ian in Florida. And a lot of times people die from the after effects of the storm because either the generator or something electri- electrical happens and they yes. end up fucking shocking themselves to death or well, they end up starting fires in their house. Like, I mean, there's well, all this crazy shit that could happen. Yes. It's about the what if could, what could happen in a situation. You always want to be around for that. Like, so you can shut stuff off if you have to unplug things, if you need to, whatever. And no offense to probably 
the wives of the Howard Stern show, but just basically how I hear them live their lives, like shopping, housewives, tennis. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're the type of people that are going to know what to do in case yeah. shit goes sideways. Like that's just not no offense. I'm right. not some like anti-woman, like they don't know anything, but I mean, most likely. <laughs> yeah. Well, at this point, the ones that are, you know, like the, the Mary's, the, the Mrs. Della, the Mrs. Hines, the, uh, you know, the, the certainly Beth and stuff. And this is where we're going into, uh, as we finish this first clip guy, there's only about seven, six minutes of this first clip that we didn't get to. And then we're going into the part two, which is Gary, can I depend on you? Which a lot of people want to hear. Um, and either way, we're going to go right into it, but I just wanted to make sure that person understands it's fine to dissent. We don't have any problem with that. If you don't agree that this is, let's say, an entertaining saga, which is fine, but to make light of the disaster that actually was like there was enough damage that it was serious enough that, you know, people did lose their power and stuff. And the fact that his own parents had to be put up by him. Which yeah. is something he just didn't want to fucking do. That's going to happen later. Loads of clips to go go through, guys. We got back office radio. We got wrap up shows. We've got you know all kinds of stuff. But we're going to go with uh, what we got. I just had to make one point before we start. I was listening to the show this week, and it's so funny because I remember listening to this at the time and being so annoyed by it. I would kill to have this back. Like this annoying Sandy or uh, yeah, Hurricane Sandy saga at the time was so aggravating to me. I would kill for this now in comparison to what they're talking about. Still COVID, still fear mongering, still giving Robin shit about going outside. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, this this is the equivalent of him today saying, you know what? You should travel through the city naked. Uh, licking and touching everything in sight, grabbing people's hands, shaking, you know, try to do whatever you can. There is no COVID. There's no, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong. Contrast right. this, you know, Mr. Getting Things Done. Keep in mind, guys, th this is end of October, beginning of November. He's months away from the big summit and he's well into GTD, uh, even though he's talked about it and stuff. He, um, and he's got this attitude through this fucking thing. Like, I don't even know why we're paying some of these people for showing up. Right. I, I, it's really strange that you just said that he he is the total opposite now. Like now he you know, he would be throwing he would be coughing on people. You know what yeah. I mean? If like if if he if, treated if, COVID like how he treated Hurricane right. Sandy, he'd exactly. be fucking spitting in the air. Yeah. Be, what do you call it? Droplet cannons? He'd be, yeah. He'd be doing <laughs> napalm droppings. So <laughs> he'd let's, be launching spitballs at everybody. Yeah. This is Joe Buck, and I must say I love, quite frankly, the Howard Stern podcast. Thank you, Joe. We're a huge fan, and we're glad you're a fan, too. Gary. Yeah, Gary and I wanted to talk to you. I told you. Oh, my you. God. You guys just waste my time. Sorry. I'll never call again. Just but just, just assume I'll be here, and if, right. and if I can't get there, I'll give you a call. All right. <laughs> uh, this is what we were ending up on. And at the end of part one, he was like, why are you bothering me? With this, like calling and discussing whether the Howard TV crew should be there. It's about Doug Goodstein, this particular section of the video. And you, we both said, like, you're the fucking boss, asshole. You're I the just... one. All fucking decisions <laughs> have to go through, except when something of like import has to happen. I was just getting a call from me at school to say it was a snow day. And then I thought to myself, yeah, could you imagine if we were calling the school like and the principal wasn't answering and saying, what, don't bother me and asking me about <laughs> this snow day? I don't want to be bothered about if the school is open or not. You know what? They're not even getting through to him. They're getting to the secretary who's calling him. <laughs> <laughs> and she's Mrs. saying, Joseph, she... is the school open? I don't know. Mrs. D'Amico won't answer. <laughs> right. What the fuck are you bothering me for? <laughs> like, just tell them. I'll, I'll let them know when I know. <laughs> Your show <laughs> passing the buck, Lee and you got to get that ISDN line set up. I go, if if we're in the middle of World War Three and the world <laughs> it's the apocalypse, you really think any? You think I'm going to have power and everyone isn't? The world what? wants to hear from you, Howard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're so annoying. I'm sorry. God, you were annoying the shit out of me yesterday. Really? Yes. Yeah. No, you handled yourself great. You got a couple of hotel rooms. That's no, I it. I care. I want Richard everyone. Christie to... is a fucking retard. <laughs> At least someone cares. 
you know what? Tim handled everything without any help from him or any direction. So mostly no direction. Yeah. He should be thanking Tim. And Tim, by the way, was probably thinking to himself, if I make these decisions about hotel rooms or expenses or anything, what if he comes back and says, we're not going to pay for any of this? Or why would you do that? So he's like in a rock and a hard place because he is either annoying him if he asks him or if he does it without asking him, he's in trouble. You're fucked. (laughs) There's two guns on either side of your head and whichever way you turn, there's going to be a bullet waiting for you. It it could. And even in a situation like that, how could would you be so surprised to hear Howard go? Well, that's out of your fucking pocket. I didn't I didn't okay that budget. That's exactly what it probably would have happened. Right. I. Uh, and the other thing is, guys, and uh, well, we'll hear more of it when we get into the back office radio segments and the Doug Goodstein on the wrap of show talking, discussing and Gary as well from home doing the like Skype or Zoom thing to them, whatever that was at the time, just calling in. And probably was just a landline. Uh, and he and discussing like th- they were all like chickens with their heads cut off. When this there should have been a contingency plan for stuff like this, considering how long they've been on, not necessarily uh, serious, but how long they've been together with Howard. Well, that and the fact that they've known that this storm was coming for quite some time. So sure. even if you didn't have a contingency plan beforehand, a week into before before the storm hit. That's when you then have a couple meetings about it. If you didn't have anything. I mean, they handled September 11th better. <laughs> Well, yeah, they were. And, they that was, and that was no plan. Right. Well, the the, the thing is, they also look, they, Robin had cancer. She's working from home. Uh, she just finished whatever surgery not long before. I can't remember exactly when. And then she's got the ISDN line set up. Why can't they all fucking get the ISDN, thing, ISDN line? Because it costs money. Right. And, and, and who's and paying for it? Right. And it's out of, the, out of his pocket because he sets aside so much for the budget and the rest is for him. Yep. And so he, th- you're not getting a dime more than than I have to give. And that ISDN line is way too much. I mean, th- remember how he complained about long distance phone calls with his kids when he's a millionaire? Give me yeah. a fucking break. Tim yeah. also has the history of knowing. Remember like when they used to go on trips with the show and like Stuttering John would order they, room service? Yeah, room served or drinks or something and yeah. this asshole complaint i mean so this has to be in the back of his head when he's bothering oh, yeah. him like i don't want to be john well yeah i guess well not even yeah well, well, there, well you're talking about tim doesn't want to be getting yes, the shit that tim yeah, doesn't yeah, he's worried about getting that john shit. Yeah. Well, and, and the other thing is you, what you the, the what I was going for was they're they're all not they're all not not just are they headless chickens, but they're all in mortal fear of what could happen. Imagine like I understand this high stress situation like you do your job. It, it could it's like risk reward thing. You know, you could do it's 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 almost like um, sports betting or something, but it shouldn't be that way with a radio show. It shouldn't be such a situation where you're you're in constant peril that, you know, your boss is going to fucking yell at you unless he's a complete psychopath. And we know he is. Well, he is a psychopath. And like we've explored throughout this entire time of doing this podcast, especially with the narcissist series, sure. it's constant, it's constant manipulation and fucking with you in the head. Yep. So these people, not only do they never know where they stand, they never yep. know if they ever are doing a good job. They always are, you know, teetering on either being in favor or in peril. So it's, yeah. it's like this constant toggle that yeah. makes you do poor that makes you not confident in your own performance and your abilities. And it also hinders your uh, efficiency and your effectiveness to do any kind of job. If you constantly have to think to yourself, what is he going to say about this? Well, the other part is it also inhibits critical thinking Yeah. because you can't critically think if that constant like bug is in your head about what is he going to say? You're You're always thinking about his response. So it, it totally cuts down the ability to critically think and problem You're right. solve. In, in, inhibition is a is the perfect word. You've got because you, it's not not even just about let's say him, but if you have to go to Gary to get okayed about so many things, all of a sudden you're adding more work to your work 
instead of not having an established plan, not having an established order of things where like literally there's a master list. If you need this, 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 you've got to go to Gary. That's it. Everything else, we trust you to do your job. Well, and you've seen examples with when somebody is on the rise, like say a Jason. Remember sure. for a long period of time, he was the golden boy. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, so that builds up your confidence. But how quickly does that fall. And then all of a sudden, you know, what is that called that when you're the, you're like the, the, I forgot the term shit, like you're the golden person, you're the golden child. And then all of a sudden you're in disrepair. You're the lemming. (laughs) You're the, you're the, you're the uh, misfit toy that no one wants anymore. Yes. Yes. Well, Gary, like, this is the thing I've, I've, I've struggled often wondering how Gary managed to keep his job the entire time. And except for the ridicule that they get from him, I'm surprised Howard didn't get rid of him during the Marcy era. I really am. Oh, I I think we've, yeah, we've said this multiple times. I'm surprised too. Yeah. I mean, and I'm not trying to be facetious guys. I'm saying he's, he causes so many problems and I, I, I'm sure at at the core level, it's Howard still needs that as a as a uh, Gary as a whipping boy, that's going to trump any inefficiency. Unless he were to pull a Scott the engineer and say, "Fuck you, you cunt! Your wife's a cunt." This and that and the other thing, and all of a sudden, oh, that's that's crossing the line. Well, we also don't know we don't know how much Gary knows because sure. Gary's also been a part of the picture for a long time. So, oh yeah, you know, you keep the people who have your secrets around, even if mm-hmm. they're completely worthless and you can't stand them. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because also and Gary, Gary loves his wine and he loves to talk. So bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Make him disgruntled. And, you know, those chompers, they could tell a pretty tale. A big, Uh, wide, smelly tale. tale. Smelly tale. (laughs) Around here. Yeah. No, I know. I like that you care, but you don't need me. Uh, Now he's hurt. I do need you. I need you. How's your ribs? I'm much better. I rested. We're all good. Yeah. I'm worried about him. Thank you. First he shit all over the bathroom and shit all over the walls, and now he broke his ribs. I think he's going through like an old age crisis. <laughs> an old age crisis, yeah. not a midlife. I think he's past midlife. <laughs> and guys, I don't believe we're going to go through shit gate. Certainly, Sam and I are not going to go through it. Sa- no. Sam isn't. Uh, but That's it was uh, horribly unfunny. It was unfunny, first of all, but also it's disgusting. It wasn't as bad as they said it was, and it was only meant to debase Tim and get him the fuck out of there and force him to quit, basically. Yeah, it was uh, the shit gate was the purposeful catalyst to yeah. make Tim out of nowhere seem like an incompetent buffoon. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, there was no there was no funny meant for that. That was literally just let's fuck with him and get him to leave on his own accord or right, see how see how much we can abuse him. Literally before that, before shit gate, up until that point. Tim was the biggest hustler and helper and wrangler and, you know, fixer for the show up until that point. Sure. He dealt with all the whack packers, a lot, not the whack packers, but he dealt with Riley. He dealt with probably Fitzsimmons. He dealt with maybe even any, well, whoever else was on the channel. Right. I mean, because he, you know, Howard isn't paying him for these access roles to, hey, cut a deal with Andy Dick, cut a deal with Greg Fitzsimmons, cut a deal with Riley Martin, you know. Nobody is getting paid extra to do these things to deal yeah. with these whack packers, but somehow Tim took that on too. But now he took a shit and it got on the wall, so now he's got to go. Give me one sec. I'm actually going to read something real quick. Uh, let me see if I can find it. And just a quick shout out to Cormano over at Reddit, uh, who I'm in touch with reasonably regular, like reasonably often. Um, and uh, it was with reference to money and Tim Sabian and, and other shows and why they got so disgruntled and stuff. This is a transcript of uh, Adam Carolla talking on Henry Rollins show, uh, I, I believe podcast, that um, – Here's how it here's the uh, the rundown. Uh, Howard originally tried to get Adam Carolla to come with him to satellite. So this is, you know, terrestrial days. Adam revealed on his show, Rollins show that Howard had called him to host a show, but kept avoiding talking about payment. Carolla. Howard was going to go over to satellite and he is a fan of my work. He wanted me to go with him and go do something over there. I just kept saying, well, how much money are we talking about? Not that that's what it's all about, but people pull that bullshit all the time where they go, whoa, I see. It's about the money. Well, no, it's not about the money, but how much fucking money are we talking about? Oh, it's about the money. I thought you were an artist. I thought you had an opinion. 
I thought you wanted to express yourself. Yeah, not for five bucks an hour. I don't want to express myself. I'll fucking do that at home. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, you want to pay me 30 million a year? I'm there. You want to pay me nothing? I'm not there. It is about the money. It's not all about the money, but it's a factor. I could never get a clear answer on how much money it was about. Stern got a little pissed off because he was like, oh, I see. It's about the money. I was like, it's not about the money, but we got to discuss price at a certain time, at a certain point. And this is the last bit of his post. Since Corolla wasn't willing to work for Peanuts, Howard settled with Bubba instead. <laughs> Bubba had been kicked off regular radio and was pretty desperate for anything. Howard tried to get free work out of other guys, too. He did a tryout with Danny Bonaducci. Tryout, quotation marks, was a code word in the Stern compound for let's see how many freak shows we can get out of this person until they smarten up. I guess when Danny realized they weren't going to pay him, he went back to regular radio. D. Snyder revealed that they wanted to do a show on Howard's channels too. Tim Sabian then tried to charge D for the ISDN equipment, and then D told them no thanks. <laughs> so Brilliant. fucking cheap. Yeah. But, but again, so when, you know, Adam straight up asking, how much am I getting compensated for this thing that you want me to do? Of course, Howard avoids it because he doesn't like confrontation or he doesn't like talking about money when it has to do with him being the one giving the money. Oh, for and, sure. And so Tim would have naturally been the person in this situation that most likely would have had to eventually figure this out for him and get mm -hmm. him as cheap as possible. So it's, it's a really shit. He's just a shit person. <laughs> yeah, he is. It's just a, it's just a complete tightwad as well. Uh, like when we, when we talk about like, for example, we're behind a paywall. Yeah. And the contributors that are on the show get paid. Everybody gets something for their work. We're not, uh, we're not so stupid as to think, Oh God, they should be happy to get the exposure. I'm sure Carrie's law firm, I'm sorry, his, like his, his law, practice when he still had it was going to really benefit from being on QF. You know. <laughs> I know. It's like people are giving us their time. They have families. They have ailing parents. They have full-time jobs. Of course we're going to compensate you for your time. We know you love the show, but we're not going to just say, hey, don't you love the show? Free, right. please. Right. Yeah, you sit in the <laughs> sit in the raven chair. <laughs> Yeah, hmm. that's not. Gonna we'll try. Work. We'll try you out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he took me out to eat last night. You should have seen what this guy ordered. He's got the oh yeah matzo ball soup the size of a, of a bucket. Yeah, it comes in a bucket. <laughs> Where'd you go for dinner? We went to the Carnegie Deli down the street. <laughs> so like after the soup, he should have been done. No, but then then they brought in his you know mile high stack of meat on bread. Like you don't even know there's <laughs> bread underneath this fucking thing. You got to cut for like ten minutes before you even hit bread. Right. And he's sitting there going, "Boy, well, I, I don't think hey, I could finish you, this." Fuck you, Julie. <laughs> uh, I split it with soup. my son, and I had like a little bit of matzo ball soup, and that was it, and we left. You think and and who had the, the fucking of Cheesecake. I had, a, yeah. I had a slice of cheesecake. That's the way they serve it. I don't run their business. You're so pregnant. Yeah. Look at the size. Oh, I know because. I just realized, like, not only is Shuli shitting on the people that weren't there, he's shitting on everybody. What a little weasel. He is. He always. He always was, and that's why I have. I still to this day. I, I can't respect him. Um. He. He's a dickhead. Uh, ultimately, he if he wanted to become Stuttering John, he and, and he, now he's he's fucking crutching on him for God's sake. Uh, I did the metrics, guys. This Uncle Rico show that he's doing, he went from having three thousand subs on um, on uh, YouTube to having like eight thousand. But then when he released recently a show of his own without talking about Stuttering John, it got like two and a half thousand hits. Oh, great! <laughs> I mean. He now, after he left the show, he claims all these sort of integrity, like integrity positions. And he's just it's just a completely different story now that he's not a part of the show. Like this person that we're witnessing right now didn't exist. It's That's frustrating. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was inactive for that because I can't move with my uh, place. And he's See? telling the guy at the front desk, he goes, this is my life partner. He's pointing at me. He's going, this is my life partner. We're checking in tonight. <laughs> and the guy, and then, and then he zones out. He starts messing with his phone. He's not paying attention. So I'm listening to the guy. The guy goes, so one king bed is good for you guys? And I'm like, Tim, they're about to put us in the same room. He goes, Your joke's no, going not. over so well, we're going to yeah. be in the same bed. He goes, no, they're not. No, they're not. D diddling away on his phone. I go, Tim, he's telling me they're one bed for both of them. Because yeah, we're life partners. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, he goes, no, I was just kidding. The guy goes, oh, all right. <laughs> Great joke. Yeah, you didn't know. He's giving us a room. <laughs> He's still alive for the party. He's all excited about the weather. I tell him, I go, what do I do when I get there? Do I have a room under my name? He goes, just take Ronnie's room. I go, I can't just go up to a front desk and go, hey, give me Ronnie's room. You're not going to just check me in. <laughs> Is it any wonder they didn't pay him A and he never stayed in this fucking slot? They never filled it. They never used him again for it. This is the worst filler. Yeah. I, I mean, none of this story is interesting. I know he's being loud and, you know, gesticulating and it's supposed to be interesting. Right. Or funny. I am totally zoning out. It's about getting rooms. OK, like. Yeah. Baha, big bed, it was some a gay reference, hilarious. Right. Ronnie oh, and he, got it. And and Tim, hilarious. a chubby guy, ate a lot of food. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. He ate matzo ball soup. Okay. Like if you tell oh. us, tell us that he ate it like he drank it with his hands. You know, he now, ate. He, he, you know, tell us something that actually makes it funny. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. You think about Artie's storytelling abilities, and this is when you miss him the most because he could have turned this into something funny. <laughs> that one drop, people love that one drop of his. I have so many Artie things because he's so fucking, he was so good like that. When he, when John the Stutterer was in and he wanted to fuck Lisa G and he talked about it and Artie goes, if, you know, if you somehow metamorphosized into the <laughs> best possible human being you're capable of being and you and Lisa G were at the top of a burning building and God <laughs> said, I will grant you the ability to fly. If you kiss John the stutterer on the lips, she would say no. <laughs> it's so true. But that's what I'm saying. Like he, just any little detail of a story, whether it's, you know, the exposition or the filler, it was yeah. so riveting and it truly was. is the opposite. <laughs> well, that one, the one, the, the first time he told his Lorne Michaels story on the air was <laughs> one of the best stories where David Faustino was trying out for the same role. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's he a made great... him wait. It's yeah. So well, it, but then when he went in, he goes, no, nah, I didn't know you had David Faustino trying out for this man. Like this guy's like Robin Williams. He, you're going to hurt your stomach laughing at this guy. I'm, I refuse to compete against him. <laughs> <laughs> so great. It's great. I loved it. <laughs> Give me Prince Charles's room. <laughs> yeah, what a nut. He's so nice much fun. Filler. Well, he got he gets so crazy and he's calling me and he's got plans and I, and, and and by the way, did any what, of them make any sense better than the ISDN line? It made no sense the ISDN line. <laughs> like he was just like, "Here's our three different plans. I'm getting Gary on the phone in a three-way." And I was like, I didn't even know it was Gary. There was an engineer. He goes, he goes, "We're going to get on a three." I go, "I'm not getting on any three-way." Just tell me your plan. Not unless it's Ralph and another guy. So, uh, so Tim, like the consummate professional thinking on the fly that he is, Hustler, not only yep. has one plan, he has three plans just in case Howard doesn't like the two plans. He's got yeah. three options. And instead of saying, wow, that's a that's great. This is awesome. I like variety. I like options. He's shitting on him and he's not even going to jump on the call. No. Of course not. Unbelievable. And he had three different contingency plans. I go, Tim. What, what were the contingency Yeah, because I'm, I'm trying to One was, what... I'm going to have the ISDN line, if, you know, and all the power goes out, right. and I'll do it from the house. And I said, you mean my apartment. Oh, I said, okay. Tim, if all the power goes out, how do you make the ISDN line work? I need right. equipment. He goes, well, you have an emergency generator, don't you? I go, no. <laughs> now you got to check the schematics of your building. And not only that, by building this. No, what building in Manhattan has an emergency generator? Actually, there generator? are a few. A few. A few. I mean, I don't have it. Like, I don't yours have might that. not have it, and maybe it's only for, like, essential stuff, like the elevators. Well, I want to say to Tim, uh, uh, is this show so important? I mean that, like, if if, if, <laughs> if if like there's a complete flooding and a disaster. Right. We need uh, to be you're, on you're here. You're going to be trying to get now, I would say if this took place before he moved to Sirius, then maybe because you have, you know, millions of people listening. But at this point, not a chance. No. And they're <laughs> going to say relevant. A high pitch Mike on the wrap up show at one point says he could do the show. He could do replacement shows on Thursday and Friday. Could he not? Right. And they go, yeah. When, but Howard chooses when he wants to do his schedule. So, yeah. So the fucking King baby doesn't want to deviate from his schedule. So, no, that's not going to happen. Fuck, no. make up, make up work. Are you kidding? 
Your safety. last line. Yeah, yeah. We have to get, yeah get, you know, I mean, it's insane. You're so, taking your wife and you're finding safety. Right. I heard option three was cyanide pills. Is well, that the, true? <laughs> the other option was, of course, which was so stupid, was like, well, I'll be able to get here. Right. You know, so that, that, that's the same that's option no, I yeah, have every day. Yeah, that's the option you Those have every day. Right. And then there was a third option. But I, isn't the third option to go to like another state? Well, the third option of doing the show there in the building, that has to be a set option. And that's not just a get a given, because what if the building was flooded or closed or the electricity doesn't work in the building and they don't have a backup generator either? So, yes, that is an option, Howard, mm -hmm. that you Eight need to something. hammer out. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> no, no, there was a third option. I don't hey, Tim, what were your three options? I know what they are. The what third option was, was switching dates. In other words, uh, canceling today and tomorrow, doing the show Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. and that, No, no. I know what it was. Tim goes. You know what? That is totally reasonable. I forgot this motherfucker only works half a week. Of course. And he switched so his show to work to the evening to accommodate fucking Madonna, who he fucking shit <laughs> on for fucking decades. And and couldn't do enough to fucking make fun of her. Sorry for the profanity, guys. It gets annoying to me when I hear this asshole, uh, like completely <laughs> sashaying past reasonable fucking solutions. And um, yeah, like just do it on other days. In fact, let's let's treat it like the Letterman show. You think Letterman rec used to record every fucking day? No, they piled up shows like Hollywood Squares in a single day. Get like a week, a month of fucking shows. Kind of like what we do. Like we'll go on recording binges and then yeah. plot Stop it that. out. Yeah. Let's go live. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Cancel Wait. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Sorry, you were saying. But this is this is insane. So they they could have all had no stress and just said, take the next three days off. We'll do Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday and Tuesday. You guys worry about your families. Problem solved. He's so married to Monday and Tuesday on a satellite radio show that yeah. he has to inconvenience every single staffer and drive everybody nuts. Well, the other thing is now let's consider this in 2022. Fuck 2022. The last couple years, three years, even we have gone to the point of we know when stuff we're almost we can almost you can always sense when stuff is pre recorded. And they've thrown right. it in there. So if you've pre-recorded a bit, let's say a Tradio call or whatever the fuck, who's to say that Tradio call wasn't made a year before or two years before? It's just filler bullshit. And they haven't released it. They're sitting on it. If you do enough of these things, you pile them up. All of a sudden, you've got a couple of replacement shows lined up where if this happens, you can always play them. And they're dateless. You know, like you can, there's, you know, you don't have, there's no Robin's news. So who cares? Nothing to date that. Exactly. And if Howard still wanted to do the show, but give the yeah. other people the day off and they had these things stockpiled, he's been in this business long enough doing a show. He should be able to easily navigate, walk in, talk into clips, maybe give a few anecdotes, talk off the cuff about a few things and, you know, kind of riff. But he can't do it. No fucking way. No way. And uh, guys, incidentally, he did <laughs> like the third or fourth Neil Young interview. I didn't hear it. And I was hoping I was wondering if he was going to crowbar in a fuck, you know, like try to get foment some more bullshit between Neil Young and Joe Rogan. Remember the whole uh, Neil Young was banning uh, was he was he was what do you call oh, yeah. it? Uh, boycotting Spotify because of Joe how'd Rogan. That work? Yeah, how would that work out? Just... Yeah, exactly. There's you know, a, Neil Young. It... Even Neil Young fans don't care about Neil Young anymore. That's the sad part. It reminded me of like when Americans don't like the way an election goes and then they say, I'm moving to Canada. And I'm like, Chelsea Handler, can you please go to Canada every fucking time? She, it's like she, it's like this the same Bette Midler. It's like the same list of celebrities. Like we're going to be upset that you moved to Canada. Just go. Go. Oh, yeah, like honestly. The, when, when, Randy Quaid when, did. <laughs> Right. I, I like Randy Quaid. <laughs> he went a little off. I think he went a little off kilter. I know. Um, I think it's but, funny. <laughs> but uh, but um, it, well, the other thing you know, that the border police are like, no, no, sorry. We have our own. We have our own version of poison. We don't need any more. <laughs> Chelsea, go fuck yourself. Drink, go, drink yourself into a stupor in the States. It's fine. Uh, bad enough. We exported Justin Bieber. But we don't need to bring in this shit. And work Thanksgiving week. And I went and, what? I, and I started to laugh. I just started to laugh. I go, get the fuck off my phone. Gary and I concocted all this. 
Yeah. Well, you guys... <laughs> I'll wait to throw Gary under the bus. <laughs> I said, hey, you... don't, I'm not going down in flames on this one alone. <laughs> <laughs> My boss will probably just want to work Thanksgiving week. Listen, I came up with four different ideas. Yeah, but I came up with an option, too. The, uh, the option where no one can get on the air and there's no show. And that was the real option. No, I... So what the fuck are you doing there, asshole? This? What is the fucking this is this is like arguing with a fucking t- two year old. Uh, I'm trying to think of the episode that we did that this reminded me this just I just had a flashback that he did something similar about it. And it was like, so, oh, it was the sussy thing. Like, mm-hmm. so you're not mad or you're mad or what are you trying to say? Like, why was he giving him so much shit if he doesn't even care about him and barely noticed him? But this is exactly. bothering him. What You didn't even realize he worked there forever. and Until you found now, out a, a guy was leaving. Right. And then it became an entire hour of bashing for a guy that you barely recognized and didn't care about, supposedly. Pretty so much. this is what this reminds me of. Like, you're going on and on about this and harping on these employees, but you just said... They didn't have to show up, and that would have been the option. What? Imagine, imagine just for an hour ranting about the someone stole your hubcaps, someone stole your fucking hubcaps. Jeez, I gotta get new rims. Fuck this. Fuck that person. I hope they die in a fucking. I hope they die in an elevator. I, I hope Jesus Christ, somebody crushes them. In those fucking those rims just choke their life out, and they get hit over the head with the rims. And then an hour later, someone goes, "Hey, what are you upset about?" And you go, "I don't remember." <laughs> <laughs> You know, you've just yes. wasted the audience's time. You wasted your time. Nothing was entertaining about it. And at the time, specifically, because I was still not tuning in regularly, but I would keep an eye on the board, say, what happened today? Maybe there's an interview came in. It might be interesting. Might be. Might be interesting. Or make it more, more specifically, like maybe the show is mockable today, even then. Right. And I remember the general consensus was – this is on par with every unfunny, shitty rant he had. Every pick a year where there was a rant that would never ended. Like from day week to week, there was always a day where he went after this person again. The same bullshit, just repetitious, and no one was entertained. Zero people were entertained by this whole thing. The Petcock saga. Remember Ronnie and that fucking right. limo? That was beating a, a fl- like a fleet of dead uh. horses. You know. I know. And and you're right. Like Robin does the same thing, though. Like when she unloads on people and they're shaken, they're literally shaken by her anger when she unloads on them or doesn't speak to them in this passive aggressive thing with Jackie or yeah. she'll do something so insane that everybody's afraid of her. They're walking on eggshells and then she'll just be like, oh, oh, oh I don't even remember. Uh, like, yeah, that's, that's like, not what, normal. What, that's not normal. No. Like that stays with the people you work with forever to the point where they're terrified of you, but you don't even think twice about this behavior. Right. Isn't that a little sociopathic? I'd say so. Yeah. I think, I think part of the issue is, is that anybody that came in today can't, you really won't get home until Wednesday. And there were people that were reluctant to do Dude, that. I told you. Anybody who didn't need to be, I would have done the I show myself. Two people didn't come in and you already goofed on them. No, I'm fine with it. And it's just Doug, Good, no, oh. it's just Doug Goodstein writes me a text like, all of the indie, all in demand offices are closed. What does that have to do with me? In demand offices. I think- okay. You're right, Howard. What does that have to do with you? Because, like you said, when it came to payment, when it came to their jobs, I don't, I have nothing to do with on demand. It's a separate company. So if Doug Goodstein is telling you that on demand is closed, then you should say absolutely nothing about it because it isn't your company. You don't want the responsibility of these employees. So he's actually doing you the courtesy of telling you that his office is closed. Yeah. Okay. It's case, like case, case solved. Boom. The feeling is, though, if you don't come in, you're going to get goofed on, and nobody wants to get goofed. I on. told everyone, I said, don't come in. Right, do whatever then, you have to do. But then, but Doug didn't come in, and Scott didn't come in, and Richard didn't come in, and nobody wants. Richard's to be retarded. That's true. Tim, he's living in Manhattan. Him and his wife have no children. Tim gave them a room. They could go live in the hotel. He's sitting there in fucking with the power out. And no elevators his, now. He yeah, can't no even elevator. get out of the building. He's retarded. Now, here's the thing, guys. The, uh, this is the other thing. 
do what you, do they do what they they got to do what they have to do. That's the same line he gave D. Snyder when he told him, "I'm not, uh, you know, like you, you know, I can't tell you, you, you don't do this. You do what you got to right. do." But he was then he wrote him off for six, seven years. Right. Right. So. As I've constantly say, the language you pay attention to the language, the choice of language. Any body body uh, uh, language analyst analyst would tell you this. These are important tells. We know Howard's tells. This is him trying to brush off like, well, it's no big deal. I'm the laconic boss. Nothing really affects me. All freewheel and freestyle all my way through this. And at the same time, us knowing. He's he's just basically admitted, I am going to fucking knock them. I am going to treat them like shit. He's admitting they can do this, but there's going to be fucking ramifications. You're going to get goofed on. So Gary's absolutely correct. And it's it has me like incensed that he's playing both sides of the fence of this. Like, I don't care. Do what you want. You know, yep. it's just infuriating. And mm-hmm. he demands such loyalty. And look mm-hmm. at what how he talks about his staff. Richard's retarded. Like, okay. Yeah. How could I not goof on him? <laughs> you are right, gerbil. You okay? Fishy fish. By the way, I found out that uh, Jason just told me the hotel that we're all booked at is a pet friendly hotel. Right. That's for so you get a brought the gerbil. What? That's for dogs and cats. I'm pretty sure they'll take gerbils and fish. <laughs> yeah. What a dick. <laughs> My gerbil needs a king bed. <laughs> By the way. By the way, I would not want to be the hotel house cleaning staff that accepts pets. Oh, no kidding. A fucking gerbil? Christ. When I'm not yelling at my crew, I always listen to Fulmore and Sam. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, we appreciate that you took the time out of yelling for yelling at your crew, but that's always nice to hear that we have fans from all walks of life. Um, yeah. We're going to go into the uh, infamous part two of this, guys. Uh, there, I do have the wrap up show from the, the the same day, but this continues from the day. For some reason, Howard TV uh, turned this into you know some of them are hour long bits, some of them are seventeen minutes. I never had Howard TV, so I don't know um, how they determined what episode should be what length. But um, some of them are really short. Yep. You know how Ellen gave us that nice promo? Yes. And a compliment. Do you think if she had to deal with this situation, like I know she's a monster at work, obviously from all accounts. Yeah. But I would think even somebody like that who's an asshole would still say, okay, I have staff who deals with this. I trust them. Tell you tell them this, this and this. And then that's then that's it. Then that's the solution. And it's over with. It wouldn't be this long drown. Like, I don't picture Ellen, you know, even though she's a piece of shit, nasty boss, like not having not being in charge, not Uh, being in charge of her staff. Well, she was super hands on to the point of in, in uh, you know, being uh, like a, an overbearing dictator. But she also had a unionized crew. And right. nothing, something like this would, could never have happened at the Ellen show because there would have been a mass walkout. Oh, I mean, of, of course. But even if they didn't have a union, she just doesn't seem like the type of boss, even though she's a jerk and a tyrant like Howard, who mm-hmm. would just say, eh, I don't know, you know, give well, me behind, some plans, but then don't call me. <laughs> well, behind the scenes, she might. Who knows? I mean, it may have very well been, been her pro- like, uh, you know, her segment producers or showrunners who dealt with the day to day running of the show. And all she has to do is drop in there like Bob Hope and go, hey, it's Ellen. I'm going to dance and I'm going to entertain you in my mm-hmm. own inimitable fashion. Uh, but uh, at any rate, guys, um, we we're going on with this and uh, it gets, you know, this is where the one you really want to hear. Can I depend on you segment? All right, so let's get this straight so Tim doesn't bother me later. What are we doing tomorrow about the show? Let's assume that they know what they're talking about with this storm, and it's so bad that we can't get to work. What I mean, what what, so what is the contingency? What is, Gary, you're in charge. You're the executive producer. Yes, we got it. What do you go? There, go there, there will be a decision made. You know, tonight by who? Uh, by me and Tim. Right. Tim and I. Tim and you. And Tim and you. And uh, we'll, you know, Tim and I will make the decision. Tim and I or Tim and you? Tim and I. <laughs> All right. We'll make the decision. Right. And he is so nervous. Like, Ooh, yeah. It, 
he almost seems more nervous and jittery than like when Fredo had to go talk to Michael. <laughs> when he hugs him by the knees. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Well, I mean, again, I, I, this is we, something we covered in the summit part three. Who uh, who it was it? Who mourns for a dumbass? Uh, where we talked about the we had we brought up the back office radio section where they talk. Gary's really uh, stressed about this meeting. He's stressed about. It. I imagine Bowie the six months from before the end of the year up until the summit is on pins and needles and he's fucking drinking like a fiend and he's popping whatever pills he has to to get through the job because if howard's doing gtd and he hears and he knows the rumblings and if, if gary knows that some of these cuts are coming he's probably also worried am i getting cut i'm surprised he hasn't had a heart attack oh yeah and it wouldn't surprise me if it happens you know, before the end of whenever Stern finishes, you know, is uh, which we know they're going to fucking drag him out, you know, barely alive of his of his of his house before he goes off mic until they say, to, fuck you, we're done. Yeah, I talked to Florentine about this and I was like, what do you think he's going to do? And he was like, why wouldn't he do it? What else has he got going on? <laughs> it's true. Well, if, it is, if Sirius, it is. if Sirius offers him it again, which that's another question in itself, like there are up and coming podcasters that have kind of made their mark on Spotify and other things that they might want to offer that salary to somebody who's more, I don't know, uh, has a bigger Prolific. audience and Prolific. kind of, yeah, and yeah. interesting and funny and, you know, <sighs> with it, you know, it, it's, it's. So when I go in these groups, there's still people – again, we, we talked about this too, too much. I won't go into it too at length this time. But um, the idea that people still get enjoyment from the show baffles me. It baffles me. They're not hate listening. They're actually saying, claiming they're, they're enjoying it. Now, they could be bots or they could be just you know appointment listeners and they just – it's the voice. They're, so I believe that when they hear it, they're not actually listening to it. They're just hearing a familiar voice. That's it. Or – it's what I have at my work where when people found out I do this show, well, there's this other sect of audience that's new and they're middle aged, close to re retirement. Some of them wine moms or wine grandmas who just have discovered the show either because they got a new vehicle and series oh, is in their car yeah. and they like it because they're also kind of neurotic um i i don't know why they, or, and because he he interviews a lot of people that they liked when they were growing up like bruce springsteen or you know what i'm saying and yeah but then he still talks about all the scat and cock shit they don't like all of it but they like some of it the interviews mostly and they were kind of the people who were like terrified to come back to work because of covid that's okay, hold, another thing. Hold, so it felt like they were commiserating with okay, him. Okay, maybe. Okay, well, then here's a question. When you have a serious show that's like a, a day of serious, one of his shows on, let's say, Monday, when it's finished and it's now on the replay or it's on the app or whatever it is or in your your car, does it work like a CD player where you could skip tracks? Like it's cut up into tracks digitally. So when there's an interview, uh, if you replay it, oh, it'll, yeah. it'll scroll. You can, you can. You know, press the thing, go ahead by pressing track, 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 track. Oh, here's the Neil Young interview, for example. It depends on the technology in your car. Like if you have a car before a certain time, no. If you have a car after a certain time, yes. Right. So right. it depends on what model and make your car is. So I can't say for sure. But I mean, I'm, I'm saying if it was new enough, there's that that function is part of the Sirius XM receiver yeah. in your car. Like you can yes. you can literally scroll ahead. You don't have to, you know, drag a mouse across the thing to get it or, you know, you don't have to constantly like let it play. You can just scroll ahead to a track and boom, there you are. Right. Plus, most people have like the Bluetooth connection with their phone. So yes. they just put the app just goes right to their car speakers. So well, that's even they can better. do it that way. Yeah. So it's like either way. But yes, there are those people that I work with who are like, you know, they like the they, you know, they but like they're not learned things. enough. They're, they're not old fans. They wouldn't know even from 10 years ago what was going they on. They would. never listened to him regularly. They were the type of people who just like peripherally knew who he was that he's some shock jock.
but yeah. never listened to the show before okay. this whole COVID thing happened. And right. yeah. So, it's so a, that, it's I find a, that a little interesting because well, the people too, who like him are the most boring people in my office. Well, I mean, uh, let's be honest. If you, if that's a show you get enjoyment out of, and I'm talking even the interviews, then I think there's something wrong with your fucking cabeza because there's, the interviews are horrendous. He interviewed Neil Young recently and Bruce Springsteen. I'm 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 struggling to get through the fucking Bruce interview. And oh. for those who said it was good, it was if it was good, it wasn't because of Howard. No. Because he was asking pretty cook, pretty much cookie cutter questions that we expect from him, but Bruce was giving these long form answers. I guess he loved hearing himself talk, and whatever it was that convinced him to go on the show, I think it was just a matter of look, listen to his interview with so and so. Listen to his interview with that. This is how he operates now. He's going to kiss your fucking ass. And that's what sold Bruce on it. It's so formulaic now, the way he asks questions. It's mm -hmm. there's I I hardly ever get surprised or something unexpected from his interviews anymore. I mean, rarely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only things I get enjoyment out of is watching him fall on his face and fail miserably and look like a dumb fuck. Yep. Nobody believes this horseshit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thanks, Vince. These are amazing. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we have a show we can run tomorrow if need be. Right. And it'll be. Deter I mean, I have a feeling. Here's a perfect example. I have a feeling that tonight they will close the bridges and the tunnels. Now, let's. So what if they do that? Are you in the city tonight? I'm not. Oh, you're going back home. Yes. Oh, right. Almost so, every almost everybody's going back home. Well, why would you go back home if uh, we're because, doing a show tomorrow? Because I think the feeling for most people is that they have a wife and kids and a house that also needs to be protected. <laughs> no, so what are you going to do? How are you going to protect? How He's he's using the word protected, guys. Now, what he means is cared for, you know, just basically helped also because if you got kids whatever we discussed this in the first episode it's not he's gonna grow you know like goliath and he's gonna grab a tree and throw it across the fucking city or he's gonna attach power lines with his fucking monkey paws and you know fix he's not superman but he's saying if something fucks up in the basement you've got to go deal with it unless you get electrocuted if there's a fire you've got to you know anything could happen you've got to be there if you're gone yes so that could also happen when you're at work and something could happen in your house. We're not talking about that. We're talking during an emergency. Plus, I don't know if you or anybody in our audience remembers what happened during like the last couple of New York City blackouts. It takes all of about a few hours till people start robbing, raping, stealing. <laughs> Breaking in. I mean, it's just like, uh, you know, I mean, that, that does happen. <laughs> well, yeah, fuck yeah. I mean, like if there's... I mentioned it in the first episode of Ice Storm 98. There was a lot of looting. People went to where they had power, like gymnasiums, school gymnasiums, whatever, uh, auditoriums that people were letting, you know, turning into basically soup kitchens for the for the time being. And when they came back, there was their house was fucking burgled. Uh, yeah. And I mean, I think that w there was like a really long blackout. I mean, this was like decades ago in New York City. And I just yeah. remember watching the news footage like on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It looked like the end of the world shit. Like people yeah. were going cool. crazy. Yes. And scumbags will take full advantage of any kind of situation like that. Oh, I mean, yeah. Look at the, you know, the 92 riots in L.A., for example. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I mean, holy fuck. Yeah. So not, not to laugh at that, but I mean, Jesus. Well, I mean, it was on fire. I mean, L.A. was burning. There was no there's no two ways about it. And uh, well, a lot of people made off with sneakers. I mean, we had it in Minneapolis, Minneapolis, Kenosha in 2020. It was nuts. And it's like yeah. so when he says protecting, that's part of it, too. Like for people who live in the city, especially not oh, Gary yes. in Connecticut, but right. You know. Yeah. How are you going to protect? In them? other words, if if a tree falls on a house, what the fuck is my wife going to do? Well, what are you? What gonna are you going to do? He's going to lift it. I'm going to lift it off. Yeah, like Samson. <laughs> I'm like Marty Jo Young. <laughs> One second, Mary. So you're so I can't count on you to be here tomorrow. I will be here. Words, to, you've yeah. decided. Well, what, that, you, you said that if if people. Well, it's pretty clear that it might be very bad, and you might not be able to get into the city. Right. So you're abandoning ship. Am I correct? That is not correct. <gasps> but if they're closing. I mean, in other see, it's the guys. It's a language. He's using everything, every negative way he can to spin it. That look, they're all fucking rats. They're leaving the ship. No, this they're not. 
it's psychological fuckery and it's yes. also the way the rapid way he's doing it where he's also on one hand he's saying so i, I gave option to not be here like he basically told them last we all heard the thing saying like why don't we just not do the show that's an option mm -hmm. you know right so right. gary is saying i might exercise this option if shit goes left from the storm we don't yep. know we yep. will see but if everything's fine i will be here that answer is yeah. not good enough he has no. to spin it in this fuckhead way Oh yes, absolutely. I'm, if I can get in tomorrow, I'm, just asking, I'm trying to make an assessment. If I can so get you're in, not, so in other words, if it's a bad storm, you won't be able to get in, right? Because you won't, you're not going to stay over in the city. Am I that's correct? Right. That's correct. All right, <gasps> that should be the end of it, right? Any no, normal human how, being, yeah, that should be it, right? See how he said, "You're not going to be in because you're not going to be in the city," right? So basically saying because you're choosing your family over the show and That's i right. left my family for the show so fuck yeah. you gary you should be but, leaving your family too <laughs> well yes but also think about this and then when he starts going on about protecting his family he goes you think i don't want to protect my family you don't have a family to protect howard that's what everyone was uh, was unfortunately stupid enough not to throw in your face i would have said uh, you're not married. You're not married anymore. You ha well, you have a wife that, and no, your children are fully grown, and you don't need to take care of them. So you're not taking care of anybody. You have a diabetic dog with cysts all over it. I, mean, I think it's dead by now. I think in 2012 probably. it was already gone. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was already yeah. gone. You're right. Yeah. Sorry about R.I.P. Bianca. Um, yeah. <laughs> but but yes. So he, they should have not only thrown it in his face. You. Sh you don't have a family because you psychologically scarred them to death that they want nothing to do with you, barely. And they right. can't even stand the sight of your fucking fake beard. Well, not only that, you've got help. You've got hired help in your fucking wherever you are, wherever you live. Ugh. You know, none of us, none of them. I'm sure even Gary doesn't have a fucking housekeeper. Maybe they had someone clean up once in a while in their house. But Gary wasn't making the kind of money to hire someone full time like fucking Consuela over at uh, Chimney Manor and have someone constantly there. That's just nonsense. Maybe Robin of all of them could afford that. That's about it. Oh, well, exactly. And he Howard you know, when he says the family thing, too, we talked about his parents. Do you even hear him having any concern for his elderly as fuck parents at this point? None. None, None. Nope. None guys. And compare that to present day, guys. He's waxing on. He's waxing poetic more about fucking Yoda <laughs> than Ben, who provided him with endless content. I have seen less tributes for Uvalde kids. <laughs> 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 that fucking cat oh, has been tragedy. memorialized. Yeah. You, you <laughs> think that you, th you think that cat was Princess Diana? I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> like the endless wall and miles of flowers. <laughs> it's like Bruce Lee's Hong Kong funeral with a fucking Yoda. We, should, we have to do a Photoshop with the wall of flowers and Yoda oh. <laughs> and <laughs> plain flowers. It's like oh. Yoda in the sky. I already have I already have a couple ideas in mind and, and Matthew Schultz helped me with one of them. So uh, that that would be I would say most of the people. I, on our I, staff. I didn't ask about most people. I just asked about you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why not bring Mary and Lucas into the city today? And and not because worry why about would you the leave house. Your, oh, what are you guys fucking crazy? So, Robin, you would leave your house. Yeah. So that, yes, I so, left a house. So she she okay. She says I left a house because she has two residences at this point. Uh, and. Her apartment is not on a ground level. No. Gary, there's so many, again, we, we're not going to go over it, but there's so many things that could go wrong in a storm. Yes, you both are fucking crazy. Howard, you live in a high-rise penthouse, and you could, if something happened to your house in the Hamptons, you have millions of dollars to fix it. Yes. I don't. Yeah, and Bowie certainly doesn't. Uh, uh, like, clearly he doesn't. Fuck. No, and especially, you know, a lot of people in... Um, Depending on what their insurance is, some people don't carry flood insurance. Sure. You know, I mean, Connecticut's not really a place that gets flooded a lot. So who would have, you know, who would have thought to get that? I mean, some people would, I'm sure. But mostly people just have fire or depending on where you live, I suppose. But, yeah, you know, if you live in Floodville, Connecticut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So if a tree falls on my house, I'll just figure it out when I get home. Yeah, you're not going to get are you anything gonna do done anyway? during the storm. Of course you're going. You get. Of course, tree falls in your house. Why do you want to be in it? What if it starts to flood? 
Yeah. It's gonna what flood. are you going to do? You can't get the tree out oh, of your so house. You're going to take a pail and get the water. So Howard, why don't you tell your entire staff to leave the house out east and just see what happens? Well, of course they have. <laughs> the entire staff. Why don't you tell your entire staff to leave the house out east? That was a good one, Gary. I'll give you that because he was getting yeah. pissed. But what would Gary do if the house started flooding? Well, first of all, you would react immediately because you want to try to preserve as much as you can and not have it. So it's to the point where you're ripping down entire walls. Yeah. It becomes mold and you it's uninhabitable. And whatever you can take from there, like maybe you have uh, hard drives, maybe you have files, maybe you have pictures, photos, yeah. things on the wall that you want to preserve. Family heirlooms. Heirlooms, sure, absolutely. He might have he might have his first ever Bruce Springsteen ticket on the wall, Wolf. Your you vinyl. Not. Yeah, your, your vinyl, your pieces of vinyl floating. There's no one you out east? Well, you wouldn't leave I it. I have out. people there now know, because you, there's no storm. And I have people in my house right now. But, you right, wouldn't but I don't leave, want someone to go down with a ship. You wouldn't leave your house unattended. You wouldn't. You, people don't leave the house. In other words, we haven't been told to leave but your homes. wife. You said. Wait a there. minute. And everybody was told to evacuate their homes in what? certain places. Those houses are under unattended. But, but that's because it was a mandatory evacuation. That right, Robin. It's a mandatory evacuation. Exactly. So for like a hurricane, for example, they'll say you should evacuate. A lot of people who are experienced in hurricane um, areas that happen every year, if it's like a level two, some of them stay because they're yeah. just like we've been through this a lot of times. Some mm-hmm. people leave. B- but again, it's just like if you had a mandatory like say where you can't drive either, that's another thing where they'll issue like right now on my phone. It says, you know, at nine o'clock, no more driving like mm-hmm. Erie County, no driving on the roads. Nobody should be on the roads or you're going to get pulled over. They're going to say, go home. You get in trouble. So if that's going out, then why is Howard even saying are you going to come in? No, the the state said to stay in my house. Yes. And that's what I throw in his fucking face right now. Do you want me to do you want me to violate a state order from our governor? Sure. Right. Like I would literally like I, I wouldn't have I would have show? I would have no problem throwing it in his face. I think what's really holding Gary back. Number one, he's a complete pussy. Number two, he knows that the Howard now the Howard now in 2012 is set to just fucking launch people into the stratosphere and fuck you because of Marcy. He's he's been that he knows the ex, he's experiencing what's going on and he's deathly afraid he's going to lose his job. I can just tell from the look on Gary's face and just his demeanor. The blood pressure. I'm sure. Fuck. I'm sure like the it's the you know, the hurricane stressful and everything. But you can tell there is this look of just utter despair and like total um, flustered and not just because of this situation, there's some sort of underlying stress in Gary right now. And it's Certainly. sad. Yeah. I mean, maybe he knows his, his house is going to take a fucking beating and, you know, how much is going to cost him. And, you know, he doesn't have a coverage. There could be any number of things. I mean, it's all speculation, well, but. Well, plus, there's been all this all this change going on at the show that's not being show. discussed on air, which has mm-hmm. never happened on the Howard Stern show. You have the Robin secret. You yep. have you have all these staffing issues. You have this grifter coming in and changing the whole show. You have Howard having these meetings and now everybody has new tasks and Gary is probably all of this and the combination of this and Howard sitting here right now saying these things to him is probably just fucking I don't know. He looks gutted. Yes, he does. And uh, what I remember thinking was, so you get Robin on the ISDN line, but you're not actually going to show a picture of her. You're not going to show like f- old video of her, like just looking. You could add like, you know, B-roll shots where you just show her kind of looking instead of you know, looking on. She's not speaking, but you could just do that to act like she's still in studio. But they're going to ask people to suspend belief that she's not in studio when there's no video footage of her on any of these Howard TV episodes. It was retarded. I know. I wish they would have. I don't know whose decision it was to not be honest about that. I'm sure it was Robin's. I don't know. It could have been all of them. I mean, it could have been like Howard not wanting her had to have a, even that bit of attention. It could have been her. I don't want to. But I mean, if it was her and saying, well, like, I've got, I'm going bald, I'm doing chemo, I look like shit, I put on all kinds of weight. Yes, I don't want to be seen. I get that. Totally. I get that 100 percent that. But I think I think once people started figuring it out and there was all this speculation, I don't understand why it went on for as long as it did. 
Me neither. That's a whole other story. And well, that when we get into the education, of Robin, I'm sure Ben will have some great uh, theories about that. So, in other words, you're not uh, you're not here tomorrow. I don't know that in a storm. I'm saying you're it depends. Be home. On, it depends on what happens with the storm. All right. Well, I'm going to make every effort to get over here. Oh, good. Now, I, and he's he. By the way, he's looking over at Shuli because Shuli's in that chair, just keeping silent. But he is going to fucking pipe in and. Everybody, like everybody on staff that was that didn't go, I'm sure they had it in for Shuli after this. You know what I'm so happy about is that Shuli's probably over there sitting in that smug. chair. He's just sitting over there smug as fuck, licking his chops, saying, I'm going to win this seat. I got it in the bag now. Fuck everyone. I am so fucking happy nothing worked out for you, Shuli. Enjoy your oh, yeah. 2,000 listeners, douche. Yep. I get here. <laughs> Who's going to be here? But really, what does he think he could do with a tree? Nothing. He's not going to do a fucking thing. Well, and also, Gary. Robin, is yeah. your house out of New Jersey unattended? Why don't you just leave it? Tell, tell those guys not to go near it. And let's just see if a tree falls on or if it floods, you deal with it later. Mm. We will. I know, what I love are you going to do? you got a big old fucking staff to watch your house, but I shouldn't watch my house. <laughs> what How are fucking you dare do? you? What are you going to I don't blame him for being that angry. That is awesome. Mm hmm. That was, that was complete. That that was the response that was deserved this entire time. But I'm mm -hmm. so glad he said, how fucking dare you? Yeah, of course. And she's laughing because in the same <laughs> way she knows she's busted. She, that's the laugh that like, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'll try to laugh it off like it doesn't bother me. Well, because you can push it so far. But Robin, especially giving him shit when you're sitting at fucking home. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, absolutely. No sympathy for Robin in this in this particular situation, in this context, zero. Why bother piling on Bowie, especially Robin? Like, you could have taken the avenue of understanding and being a good friend and saying, yeah, Howard, you know, this, why, why would you take Howard's side in this situation? I just think Robin just should have said absolutely nothing, that this could have been a great time for her to have Gary's back. And instead she chose to have Howard's back for absolutely no reason while she's sitting at home, keeping a big secret from the audience and being a total asshole. Well, she, the other thing is maybe she's extra cunty. We'll call it that um, to, because Howard is the one that pushed her into the surgery, into the, you know, got the doctors, got the oncologist, got her set oh, up. Yeah. And that's what's on her mind. There was that whole time period where it was Howard Save My Life um, yep. tour. Yeah, that was after she finally came back, which would have been probably another f seven months later, I guess. Right. But just from listening to that, you could tell she was feeling like she owed him something for probably. Yep. So this entire time, you're right. She's on, yeah, she he's he's yep. picking up the check pretty much. Yeah, got it. Yeah. I, I don't know. But Why I, are you getting so angry? I'm just asking what I you're doing. I think it's rude. For Robin, Robin to say, and, and you for that matter, you to say, hey, fuck your house. Tree. I'm not I'm well, just I don't saying, know you, that the it's event a tree. Of a disaster, I, you're not going to be able to do anything. I don't know what the disaster is going to be. And it could All be right, on, let's, hold let's, on, hold let's on. Imagine it could the be disaster. on a smaller level that I can work with. All right, let's say. I, uh, this about Robin during this time. Now, do you think, because it was so life and death and it was so terrible what she went through and the recovery I'm sure was agonizing and the chemo and everything else and then figuring all this ID ISDN line but before they even figured this out and what they were going to do about it why didn't Howard just say retire thank you for all these years and live your life comfortably like do you think she wanted to continue doing the show or do you think he kind of pressured her into keep doing the show it's a good question and it, and, and something that's even more it's a more even more valid question in 2022 because she doesn't do the news since 2019. So why is she still on the show? Why isn't she retired? She's well past the age to retire, as most people would. My theory is, number one, she can't afford to retire. That's number one. Oh, yeah. We know she's a horrible money manager. Absolutely. Number two, she's just as big an egomaniac as Howard, if not bigger. So she loves still some notoriety. Number three... And I'm going to chalk it up to mostly this, and I'll give her, I suppose, credit. If and if you want to call it credit, I guess that's the word, um, for wanting to stay working because she has nothing else. She has no husband, no children, no grandchildren, no real friends, mm -hmm. you know. And so if all you have is this little life preserver, which is this show, then why get rid of it? And it's income as well. You're right. 
I mean, when you name your cat Jennifer Aniston, you're right. It's this desperate, this yeah. is all you got. Right. I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, what was the one, Blaze? I remember she when she got out of that, apparently oh, she would fun. like go visit him once or twice a year, and that would be about it. But she got off of that fucking, uh, I love when Bowie, um, uh, I think I used it in a new drop, a new um a new th- opening and uh, where he says, uh, what about we talk about people who uh, do a bunch of fads and, and just get rid of them and get bored with them over the years? Like, uh, you know, playing chess, photography, bicycling, grilling. She's a hobby hopper. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Let's say your house is flooding, as you say. What are you going to do? Well, I have a some I have a pump that I could, you know, hook up and start to try to get the water out. Yeah. You think that's going to work? I don't know. Always. What is he yeah. talking about? It's all. Yeah. Well, that's that's one <laughs> thing. Second of all, maybe I don't know. Maybe he has a house that it, it looks like a brand new house that had that Connecticut joint that that when he was there. But you just don't hook up a sun pump when it's maybe going to be a hurricane. It's always hooked up, isn't it? Is it supposed to be? Yes. Yeah. I mean, if you're that's weird, <laughs> what is it attached to the trampoline, which he left outside? <laughs> so, so maybe Gary really is worthless in this situation. I don't maybe. know. Okay. In but I, I would rather flood? do that than do nothing. I see. I don't think you see. No, no. I'm, I, <laughs> I just but, asked you, are you going to be here tomorrow? And now you're getting defensive. Because have, you, you are feeling guilty. So I'm not yelling. feeling guilty. Listen to your voice. You're yelling. But you, you're not. You, there's no. I have all I said is, no are you going to be here tomorrow? Are you staying there's no in the sensitivity city to somebody's family or home. I didn't. Say, I said. But you did. You, you go. I oh, asked you. You said no. Here's what. Here's the I difference. I'm going to point that out. I'm going to get <laughs> yeah, you right here. Go ahead. You said. Oh, so I guess I can't depend on you. Right. Uh, your, mouth, your mouth's a, your mouth's agape. But now it could be. Any, I let that one play quite a while, so that could be any number of things. I'll let you expound. I'm. I'm. I'm incredulous. I can't. I, he said it was like the rats jumping ship and who's going to be here and can I depend on you? And now at the same breath saying, I, it's not a big deal. And mm-hmm. what's a big deal? This is psychological torture that you that you have instilled in this guy where you are winding him up like a fucking toy. He is he's sick. Um, yeah, it's it's manipulation, mental manipulation, it's gym, mental gymnastics. And I mean, you're arguing with a fucking primate. But um, at the same time, Gary knows he's under attack from two fronts. He's got if he ain't hearing it from one speaker, Robin, the left speaker, then the right speaker, Howard is going to give it to him. He should be telling both of them, go fuck you, both of yourselves. You don't have you don't lift a finger to do anything in your own house. And if you did have a flood, you'd be crying, trying to figure out what to do. This has happened, though, like different variations of this type of behavior with Howard over the years so many times that I am surprised that Harry, uh, uh, Harry what am I talking about? Well, let's look at him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that Gary hasn't figured out what gaslighting is by now and calling yeah. out the behavior when it starts happening. Like, I think that I'm surprised he doesn't catch on and it lets he lets himself get so bothered when you know this is how this man is and how he manipulates and gaslights the problem though is with these people is when you do call them out they get upset like Mm -hmm. really upset if you point out that gaslighting stuff that howard does then he's like what happened with Artie in the bro fight that's what he turns into when you when he actually gets called out on the manipulation part that he's doing mm mm-hmm then he goes, you know, he goes into a tailspin, actually. Yes, total he can't recover. Tailspin. There's two now offhand. Now we did two. We covered two episodes in which people really nailed him on in, in one indirectly. Dan from Illinois, that one I did with James, the two parter, which was, you know, honestly, like just so much fun. And um, shout out to Turnbuckle Tabloid and James. Yeah. And uh, the, lo- love him on the show, by the way. Fantastic. Job, fantastic. Yeah, we got our. We got our Puerto Rican quota. We got um, we got a we got our New York yeah, quota. <laughs> yeah. So I'll let uh, the diversity, equity, inclusion office that quite frankly know we're up on the quotas. <laughs> right. Exactly. And so um, the the only we don't have a black woman, um, but I could maybe I could ask Carrie's wife to join us. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so the other thing is um, you've got that like all these years. And again, Bowie's not he's just been like um, it is it's not Stockholm syndrome, but he is 
that he's been so conditioned to take this abuse and he is at heart completely gutless that he's the perfect target for Howard. Cause he's like that. Remember those, um, bouncy, those things you would inflate as a kid. If you punch them, they pop spring back up like life size, yes. you know, punching dolls, whatever, but they're just inflated. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what yeah. Dewey is on this show. He'll keep coming back for more and yeah, he'll get upset and yet he'll talk back, but he won't leave. He won't ever have the guts to say, I'm leaving this shit, which is really at this point, if he didn't have that new house, it probably would be what he would do if he had someone in his ear like Mary, if she had any concern for his well-being, his mental well-being, but she doesn't care. She would say, you got to walk. Sussy did it. Dan from Illinois. They both Sussy did it in a very calm, very hippie type way. Like, hey, man, I'm going to do my thing. He stuck to it. And he wasn't going to waver and he wasn't going to get turned away or get angry because he realized he had the self-awareness to realize it doesn't matter because you can't talk sense to these people. So the bet sussy for me is the best way to handle Howard, the gray racking and yes. just the stay confident, calm, stable. Right. Because mm -hmm. then when Howard unravels and spirals from that reaction, it mm -hmm. makes him look 10 times worse. Whereas Artie, even though he got Howard to spiral, Artie also spiraled. Yeah. So, you know, Artie was definitely getting some jabs in there and making Howard crazy and, mm -hmm. you know, correctly, astutely pointing out the manipulation. But he also lets himself get bothered. Yeah. Like a good a good chunk of the the bro fight, if up to a point, Artie has him on the ropes and then unfortunately lets him get, get you're like saying he's so like Bowie. He, Bowie does it right away with with Artie. It takes a little longer for him to get sucked into it and doesn't realize because Artie is a, an emotional person anyway. He has feelings. And Gary usually isn't so upset right off the right. Off, I mean, he is more defensive than a lot of people. But like we said, I think there's something going on besides this hurricane thing that's got him going and that's why he's kind of more responsive and reactive i think so and it's and it's more likely displaced anger from the marcy shit that he knows For is coming sure. down i'd say yep. i'd say without without a shadow of a doubt that's pretty much what's about what's going on in his head too and i mean god and could you keep, imagine keep... that fucking cunt walking around the office changing everything for all we know, he's heard that Tim's on the chopping block because of shit gate and all this stuff. And for all he knows, Howard has told him or someone's told him, like, we're, there's going to be some fucking changes. We are getting. And Howard said it on the air. There, things are going to change. Now I got this getting things done. I'm going to, you know, now that I'm reading this and I'm learning this and this woman has helped me or whatever. Or, you know, they're all fucking like, what is this? They've all dealt with this level of uncertainty their entire careers when it came to contract time or other issues, whether they were, you know, getting fired from the station or getting dropped from the station or getting fined or, you know, or I don't know if we're going to sign or where we're going to be and uh, blah, 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 or who's going to be staying on. And, yeah. you know, they've always dealt with this uncertainty and which I'm sure leaves everybody a little bit hapeless and less confident over time. So I can imagine when the Marcy thing happened that it was just like, you know, you're, you're already on shaky grounds as a human being and a worker in this environment. Could you imagine what you feel like then after that? Yeah. I mean, honestly, this is, I mean, if, if, if Bowie was Alex Trebek, you might say this. Howard, that sounded pretty fucking dumb. So... <laughs> <laughs> if he had any if he had any balls, he might like Alex Trebek, he might tell his bosses this. Hey serious XM. Suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> You're better than the drops than Fred is these days. <laughs> Fred's usually across the room and you can hear him just out of earshot going like, Oh, hold on, I got my drops over here. And then all of a sudden he I comes know. back. It's on the other computer. What you mean the fucking Packard Bell from nineteen ninety five that you have mothballed with cobweb somewhere? I figure Fred is so disinterested at this point that they have an intern paid to just like poke him with a stick once in a while <laughs> yep. to get him to Prob do something. <laughs> like to see if he's still alive, basically, from yeah. the window. <laughs> here, uh, we, here, kid, here's your stick. <laughs> once in a while, just give this guy, this, give this lesbian grandpa a poke. N nudging him with like a back scratcher <laughs> just at an arm's length just to see if he's still breathing. Hey, I can't depend on you to be here tomorrow. Am I correct? I don't think that's Am how I you wrong? said Am I right? it. You just said that's what I said and you said that's not how I no, said it. I can't depend I said, on you to be here tomorrow. I can't depend Gary, on you. Gary, can I depend on you to be here tomorrow? 
If the weather uh, allows, no, no, no. You, can I depend on you to be here tomorrow? Is there is it an absolute that I'll be here tomorrow? Or the answer is no. Okay, that's all I asked. But you say, can I? I guess I can't depend on you. Not I, depend I on can't you to depend be here on you to be here tomorrow. Well, there's a am I correct or am well, I or am I hallucinating? There's two oh. different versions. Can I? I know, honestly. I'm hallucinating. I'm yeah. hallucinating. Well, Gary's not helping his case because he's actually like right, instead of just saying, I, I, "Look, I've already told you, weather permitting, I'll be here." I would say. I know you're having trouble with this conversation, Howard, but I'm no longer going to participate in it because I already gave my answer. Put my oh, headphones on the mic and walk away. Mic, yeah, mic drop. Done. Yeah. And then I'm going to put on some other headphones, listen to some music, <laughs> play, play some fucking solitaire <laughs> and sporkle, eat a bunch of fucking chips. Yeah. And munch on some plantains and pretend that you're not even here. You right. fucking horse's ass. Right. And suck my ass. Yeah. What else? Man. What else? What else should you do in this situation? Really? It's just like you, if you don't gray rock like Allison figured it out before everybody, uh, you just got to treat it like no, what you said means nothing. I'm going keep going. And in the sussy uh, two parter, which I wholeheartedly recommend to it, those listening to the show um, and, and like new listeners, I, I think it's um, I don't remember which episode, but it's about 40 back. Um, uh, the. The, the 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 unraveling of Howard at the at the fa in the face of a guy who's not taking the bait is so much more apparent than if you get like Bowie and get all angry and defensive because now, as you said, it's holding a mirror up to his own narcissism, his neuroses, and the fact that he just can't deal on a conversation level with the conception of a guy leaving his show. When people don't do what Howard wants, like even Bath is starting to do this now, where she just won't participate yeah. like she just won't do it she'll just be like i'm not doing this i don't like this i'm walking away like she, has she will limits. she will because she can feel when he's picking 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 and he wants things to go a certain way and he wants beth to be the dumb fuck who did something wrong so he can lecture her whether it be about an allergy shot or what was it called the epi pen that, that yeah. whole yeah epi pen epi pen and you know he wants to keep going on and on and harping on about it to lecture her and when she's had enough which is now happening more often, she just basically gray rocks him and says, I'm leaving. I'm done with this conversation. Bye-bye. Have it with yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Depending on you to be here tomorrow is one thing. Can I right. depend on you if right. you don't say anything? That means I can't depend on you no matter what. No, I said tomorrow. Can I depend on you to be here? And you said no. That is correct. But then you went through a whole beaver-toothed explanation about how... Uh, but you asked you, me, no, no, you I, said you're why. getting defensive. But you said why. I said why. The second he said beaver tooth, I would have said, have you looked at your chompers? Yeah. You can barely talk over them, jangling around in that fucking plastic surgery, ridiculous-looking head on you. Are yep. you kidding me right now? And by the way, since uh, after the from the from, from the point where he gets his new caps mm -hmm. and can't uh, there, there's a sh complete shutdown of anybody discussing his teeth. And that's the one thing almost you could get almost nothing from the, all the years of the archives since that point where if anybody even makes a remote mention, it gets brushed over real quick. And because you can tell he's really fucking embarrassed about it. Yes. Yeah. More than the hair. Now they're actually getting meta jokes about the wig and, you know, Jennifer Vitz and, you know, this person she's calling in and say, oh, Andy, that's in the latest episodes, guys, uh, that we just uh, their breakdowns. And now he's kind of maybe thinking he's going to get ahead of it, but mm -hmm. not really. I, I, I that one I'm on, I'm on the fence over. I don't know if that was them trying to act like he th thinks it's no big deal that he's uh, people know about his hair. Or whether it's the start of, yeah, I'm wearing a wig. He's going to come out with it eventually and make a big thing about that. Yeah, I lost my hair a long time ago. I don't understand how he, th first of all, the fact that if anybody has seen what he looks like recently with yeah. the show, it is so horrendously bad. I didn't, I mean, this time period is bad. This yeah. is so much worse. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's he's unbelievable. A ghoul. He's a ghoul. That that and, wig uh, is not even a, it's it, it really is like a bad patch of pubic hair from the seventies. It's just fucking brutal. <laughs> 
It is a Merkin. <laughs> it's a fucking Merkin, man. <laughs> Sad. What's and then I told on? you why. And you and spend then, the night no, in the city. I, then you told. I told you why. And then you because you need to be there with Mary. You completely discounted and Lucas. it. You completely discounted it. I did not. I just said. You did. You are said, you going to be? And then Robin asked you, "What are you going to do in then, the event of the storm?" We're hearing you. Both of you said, "Like, oh, what are you going to do?" He. He. I didn't do this with a. Uh, you need to be there with Mary and Lucas. Like, of course, the way you're saying this and what you mean by this is supposed to be nasty, condescending yeah. and hurtful. But yeah. now you're telling him, oh, but you know what? I didn't say it like that. I think yeah. that's what you're going to. He's such a piece of shit. He is. But what are you going to do? I'm going to be with my family if something okay, happens. Okay, so that's what we asked you. Well, you he defensive? did say you could bring them into the city and have them stay in the hotel with you. Right, and then now I'm leaving my house unattended. That's the most ridiculous fucking idea ever. Yeah, your family should uproot their fucking life and completely like do whatever it is you decide is best for them. We Howard. just, I would say we just went over this, Robin, and you're right. I'm glad she, he's swearing at Robin and saying that's the most fucking ridiculous idea ever. And by the way, we just went over this carousel, you two assholes. Yeah, basically. For Robin. Well, maybe a neighbor could keep an eye on it. Sure. They, what, 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 when they're dealing with their house, they should deal with mine too. Why do they look over the whole fucking Well, maybe you'll pay him. <laughs> that doesn't, doesn't. Maybe you'll pay him. Maybe you'll pay him. With what? With what you're giving me, shithead? No, my neighbors actually like me, so if I really needed a favor, they would probably do it. But I'm sure they're going to be busy with their house. I can't hire a staff of people to sit at my second home. Right, and it's like, okay, so so your solution is throw money at things because that's all you do. You throw money at your kids. You throw money at your employees. You throw money at your wife, maybe, if you withhold stuff. But you don't throw money to your fucking employees. I wonder how much money he throws at the pink mafia to keep it out that he's a flaming homo for years hiding it. it don't work. You don't pay people to look at oh, your house. You don't. People have to look mm -hmm. at their house. So right. if something's going wrong in somebody's house, they're going to leave that to go handle my house. Do you ever yeah. leave your house unattended? Not during storms, Robin. Okay. All yes, right. of course. We all leave our houses unattended, <laughs> but not when we know. That, first of all, the governor of Connecticut said 600,000 people without power probably two weeks. Right. Probably right. for so, That's where you want so to be. So let me get back to my question. <laughs> because of... That's not have a small ever, number. Have you? No, it's not a small number, especially for his community. And no. have you ever um, left your house unattended? No, Robin, I never leave the house. Like, right. shut the fuck up. This yeah, she's a It's not a sunny day at 75. Fuck you. <laughs> well, I was asking you is I'm trying to figure out the plan for tomorrow. Can I depend on you to be here tomorrow? Uh, not absolutely. No. Oh. The answer is no, right? Right. Okay. That's what you should have said instead of feeling all guilty. He didn't feel guilty. He's angry. There's a difference. He's angry because yeah. he's, 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 he's arguing with a fucking two-year-old. And imagine if he said right out the gate, no, you can't depend on me. Do you, do, how would have that went? Let's like, seriously, Remember? you're <laughs> Howard. Hey, ask me if you can depend on me. Remember we talked about Ganji <laughs> leaving? Uh, he should have just said, yeah, fuck it. I am going to see Scott Einziger and like farting on his way out and smoking when he walked in the studio. And like, yeah, I'm going to see uh, Scott Einziger and I hope he wins the fucking lawsuit. Fuck you, dickhead. Yeah, we're going nice, to eat a nice bunch wig. of ribs, barbecue, chug beers and laugh at your and fucking laughing. wig. Yeah, absolutely. That's what Bowie should be doing right now. He should have walked in like earlier when, when he started, when he first came in. He's like, he should come in there with a big cigar and go like, uh. yep. Yeah, I'll be at home. If you need me, just give me a call. I'm actually um, making a billiards room in my house. I'm going to have a dartboard with your face on it, and we're going to play darts the entire storm. Right. We've arranged, uh, we've printed up some new toilet paper with your fucking hair all over it. Yeah. Yep. Picture your fucking chin. Yeah. I don't really you feel guilty. Just say I no. Just, I... just say no. I can't be depended upon. Yes, no, I can't be dependent upon. That's it. Now. Who can I depend on if I make it in tomorrow? Surely, can I depend on you? Yes, Howard. All right. Thank oh, you. Will you my. be uh, attending to your home? Uh, my <laughs> wife is going to be taking care of that for me. Well, I, you, where do you live? I, I'm outside of the city. I'm in a... In an I'm apartment? In, well, no, I'm on a first floor. I'm on You're in an apartment. Uh, Gary, yeah, why are you attacking this yeah. guy who wants to work with me tomorrow? I need people... <laughs> He's attacking him because Shuli lives in an apartment 
where there's a landlord that is watching the property, most likely, or mm -hmm. a bunch of people who live in the building who are also watching the property. It's an apartment. It's not a house. Right. He's also not beholden. Like he's he doesn't if it if the, if the apartment gets it. fucked, he's just he doesn't have to pay for the repairs. No, you have no responsibility but to pay your rent and make sure you don't fuck it up so you don't lose your security deposit. End of story. Fuck. Shut up. Shuli's Shuli. only worried about his rolling papers staying dry. Fuck. God, I wish somebody <laughs> robbed his family during this. <laughs> oh, man. Here, how dare I can't I? depend on you. This guy says I can, you can depend on me. And you're attacking him like not, you're an enemy of my show. Well, he, <gasps> fine. You know okay, what? I'm going right. to leave. I didn't say anything. I just no, said I'd be here. here. Who can I depend on? Truly, can I depend on you to be here if I make it in? Nothing will stop me from doing my job, Howard. All right. Thank you. Nothing. Fred. Oh. Yes, sir. Will you be here tomorrow? I will be we, here you tomorrow. make your every effort to get in. I will be here. I was here the day after 9-11. I was here during several blizzards when there were no cabs. All but right. I don't have. Okay, you're such a stalwart, Fred. Thank you for your wonderful work <gasps> ethic. Thanks for drops. transparently basically telling us your marriage sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to keep me at home whatsoever. I'll be in. I don't care who dies in this particular uh, disaster. Uh, what children? What wife? <laughs> My I'm wife yours. could be floating on a kayak down the street and I don't give a shit. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, the... the uh, so the next, hold on, look guys, a little bit more of the problem that Gary has. All right, so so Fred, you're depend, you, I can depend on you to be here. I'll be here. Surely you're going to be here. I'll be here, Howard. Benji, you have an opportunity to come in or no? Are you going to be guarding anything or are you going to be here? What if my internet goes out? Well, no, seriously, <laughs> are you going to be here? Yes, yeah, I'll be here. All right, so, all right. So now I know, Robin, you will be able to broadcast? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, from your house, you'll be able to broadcast? Mm -hmm. Why aren't you? Why aren't you fucking piling on her? Oh, because she had cancer and she's housebound. Well, they should all be fucking housebound. It's a goddamn emergency. That gets me. She should shut up through the entire thing. She should literally just turn her fucking mic off. And yes, guys, I know most of the time that should be the case, but especially in this context. Uh, I can't. I couldn't agree more. I said it before. She, I can't believe, but you're you're right. She's feeling enabled. And willing to back Howard and pour salt in the wound of Gary and anyone else who's not going to be depended upon for the show, even though they right. can, you know, push it off a few days and leave everybody the fuck alone because she's might be feeling this extra pressure from all the help supposedly Howard gave her. Yep. All right. So, Gary, I can't depend on you tomorrow. That's right. But I yeah, we, we got did. that. God, it's like a circular saw. I want I, I want to kill him right now. Like I was going to say, you look like you want to strangle him. I do. I really, really, really do. I'm sorry. Like if you were in Gary's position, would you actually leap up over the console? Gary keeps saying he's going to leave now. He should have left. Like for me, I would have slammed the headphones, if not whip them at him. Yeah. And just walk out. Yeah. And then and, meeting with, and then meeting with HR. <laughs> write a book about everything you know about him and never speak to him again. Like if this kept going on, which it will at right. the point that I would have been at, like you have just ultimately made me your worst enemy. Like, yep. yeah, put this book yeah, together, I'm give gonna, it to I'm like 20 publishers it. and say, guys, anything happens to me, you put this out. You know who can depend on me? Andrew Morton. Cause that's going to be my first phone call tomorrow. <laughs> Kitty <laughs> Kelly. Sending recordings. <laughs> Jackie if you get the reference you know exactly who I'm talking about the guy who sure. wrote the Princess Diana book <laughs> yeah exactly with her really? am I correct correct all right that's what I wanted to know look at you you look like you're gonna cry I'm fine fucking yeah. baby I'm not a baby just man up and say you won't be here I didn't oh say I won't God, be here oh my god you're attacking but I didn't screaming say, and yelling I didn't say I won't be here you're like you're like um man up and say you won't be here but by not being there you're actually a pussy in Howard's eyes. Do you, any, anybody feeling, get that little irony there? The little. Uh, I, I'm feeling so angry that I feel like I'm just going to be an irrational rage maniac. So I'm going to like be quiet for a little bit and just listen. Okay. Well, let's, let's, let someone else uh, figure it out. Jesus okay. fucking Christ. This man is a complete idiot. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> yes. Like a maniac. 
No, you're. I need to know who's going to be but, here. But, but how I get here, no one's here. There's a whole it that you're not really being honest Gary, about. Gary, Gary, you're, being, just you're be honest. being dishonest. No, you're, you're attacking being dishonest. me. I need you're to know who's going to be here. You, you want to make it sound like I don't care about my job. I did not say but, okay, that. I'm I said, can I depend on I'm you to be here tomorrow? Because I want to be straight. I care more about my wife and my kids than I do about this job. Okay. Thank you, Gary. That's what you should have said ages ago. Yes. And Howard, how many times do you need the roll call for who's going to be here? We just went over this. Maybe yep. write it down so you don't have to keep having the same conversation and torturing us. Yeah, totally. Including Gary. You're torturing mm -hmm. your audience. Yep. It's a close race. It's Gary, a close race. Gary, you don't even have to go that far. But I that's just what said, I think you want to know. Can I depend you on you to be here tomorrow? And the answer Understood. is either yes or no. I know, but you know that you're going in a, you, you I'm are. not going anywhere. You're put Howard likes that Shuli loves and cares about the show more than mm -hmm. his family. Yes. Howard He's getting likes rewarded by not, not monetarily, but most people who are normal and not complete psychopaths like Howard yep. would think it's admirable that you put your family first. But mm -hmm. this fucking maniac is more impressed with a guy who's leaving his family during a hurricane yeah. and sucking his ass. And it's so disgusting. It's obnoxious beyond belief. And in, in any event, um, I mean, you've got, it's 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 just to hear it. It get, it doesn't get me as angry as it gets you, but that's because I don't know. I I've already sussed out that they're all assholes, and ultimately, it's I don't have too much sympathy for Gary. He's still there. All of this is still like and 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 some people, like I said, who are not interested in this particular saga. This is all just you know fucking. This is dust in the wind. But I think. The main reason to go through this saga is just to illustrate, especially during this Marcy Turk era, how bad it was getting for the staff behind the scenes and on 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 the air. Because well, two years, three, even three years earlier, four years earlier, it's a little more jocular. It's a little more laid back. It just gets tighter and tighter and tighter and more depressing to listen to as the years you know continue. More control, more staff bashing, more yep. grievances on Howard's part on air. Where, like we said, like now we have entire shows where it's about Howard's grievances with the staff and airing them out on air and being a total narcissist that you can't please. And it's not yep. appealing. And so people like who listen to our show, they'll say like, you know, even if they don't like the saga or something or the 15 Foundation, the point of having this stuff on record is because this highlights exactly why he lost so many of his fans and mm -hmm. it's important to not only go over like you know the fun times good times hilarious interviews whatever we do or current right. show but also to have this on record with the criticism that it fucking deserves that i wish these people would have pointed out at the time yeah and again for those new listeners who aren't quite sure what we uh, typically reserve the criticisms of the current show the breakdowns on our patreon episodes so that they don't get cut by youtube and sirius xm because there's all kinds of bits that they id tag so if you're interested in that we always do like little promos and stuff for the most part they're going to be on our patreon so just sub to that in the black kluge level the black kluge tier the links in the description and uh if you like what you hear and if you don't like and, and basically if you like what you hear on youtube YouTube channel, you're just getting more of it on Patreon and including a bunch of stuff that's only accessible um, after like that on the on that tier. If you go well, uh, lower, you're not going to get the 30, 40 bonus episodes. I actually think it's really great because it's a variety. It's different voices and it's yes. kind of it's really different than the YouTube channel. Actually, I mean, you have a lot of, you know, me and you and stuff, but it's right. It's a lot more different variety of voices and fun topics, sometimes shorter, sometimes longer. Raven does the breakdowns. She's amazing. And I, I just think it's a it's a great variety of voices and different topics. It's a good mix. And we try to uh, play with years like just uh, recently we recorded the me volume two, which goes back, you know, 20 years before this. And then, like I said, we break down stuff as up to present day within a month ago uh, with Raven. And then with James and I, we've got a couple things planned for this weekend. Um, I'm still sorting them out. And they'll will span all the decades, actually. And so anybody who's not, you're always going to find something you like. That's the point. Yes. So if you don't like one thing, there's another thing. <laughs> That's right. Just Just wait and it'll come out. Trust me.
putting words in my mouth. You're getting defensive. Again, I have to make arrangements for tomorrow. If I'm coming in, who is going to be here? Okay. Doug Goodstein is not here today. Today. That's right. There's nothing going on, and he's not here today. In demand, he offices, could, are in demand offices are closed uh, somewhere. There's two t- now, okay, so he just he just said, for, at first it's fine, he goes, he's not here today. Then he decided, I'm going to shit on him and mock him in that same breath. And I'm a, and he also isn't a part of the Howard Stern Show. Don't forget, guys. That's he's right. Howard TV. And he made sure that everybody knew that difference when it came to raises or when it came to contract time or when it came to having a job. So I don't even know why he's bringing Doug Goodstein up because he doesn't work for the show. Right, exactly. If he's so in, in uh, so uh, inessential, then why are you bringing up and why you have to shit on him? Yep. Yep. TV guys, yep. Gadgie's directing the show, right. and there's one Take other guy two. who's doing cameras. <laughs> well, if that's the case. Why don't we do that every day? Yeah. Like, why <laughs> do we need these other takes. guys? <laughs> why do we have all these extra people? We could save a fortune and in Ro- the budget. And Rob, Rob, the camera guy. We could save a fortune in the budget. We, not we. I, I could save a fortune. I could take some more marbles that yeah. I don't deserve. Exactly. I is right. doing the uh, hallway camera. Worst thing, you, three. worst thing you can do around Take here is, two. is show your Where's expendable. Where's my shit bucket? Right. You know? Oh, trust me. I'm looking over the whole situation. And Gary, mm. my family is most important to me as well. But when they asked you why not bring your family down here, then you said, well, the house. Why leave the house? So if your family's most important, you know, you get Don't to the attack, house when you Gary. Get there. I just needed an answer. I'm Who just is saying. Gonna- Shuli's being a fucking idiot. And, and you, got, you, you just you you heard that last little bit. I had to let that yes, play a little. I, I did hear that. That's the underlying threat that's cutting underneath all of this hurricane talk. And he's still asking like a dumb fuck with hands like a train seal in the air, gesticulating who I need to know who's going to be here. We just went over it five times, mm-hmm. five times. If you don't yep. understand right now who's going to be here. I'm going to check you into a nursing home because you clearly have dementia. We just told you. Yeah, absolutely. And at the end of the day, guys, there's, you know, you can decide for yourselves um, what you feel is, uh, you know, worth uh, worth covering. But in line with the um, Tracy versus Gary coverage that we also have on Patreon, but that's just by the way, for those I didn't mention, we also cover video stuff on Patreon as well. It's not just audio, just for just to make sure people understand that the new listeners. Um that even during that point, and he's talking about, I don't know if I'm going to be re-signing. It's like October or something like that, or it's like mid, I can't remember exact timeline, but I don't know. Oh, no, it's in May. I think it's eight months ahead of the uh, the renegotiations. And this is right when Sussy decided a year later, I'm leaving. Fuck this. I'm not going to go through this again. The stress of not knowing if we have a job. So add that. That was 2010 going into 2011. This is 2012 going into 2013. Throughout that whole fucking time, just imagine the undercurrent of indecisiveness, nerves, uh, stress, like because you don't know exactly what's going to happen to this fucking show. You don't know if you're going to be making the same money. You're probably mm-hmm. getting pay cuts. Who knows? That's that. That's on Bowie's mind, too. That Well, didn't you hear he said, he goes, believe me, I'm thinking about all of this. And he goes, think about yeah. how much money I can save. So, again, there's all these all these underpinnings that are right. just so stressful. And you can say it like being a dick. But what it really it betrays to me is you need to save money because you're thinking of I am losing money. Why are you losing money if you're all that? Why you have 60 million listeners? Do you have to cut back? Why do you even have to mention it? You're a fucking multi hundred tens of millions you got hundreds of millions presumably and that's what you want to put off out there but then you're still worried about nickel and diming your fucking show because you got a bloated staff what's that about well getting things done i mean we can think of it the way he presented it as a way of being efficient and effective when it came to the organization itself but you can also look at it as a cost cutting Mm -hmm. corporate person coming in and saying, okay, we can cut half of these people. These people can take on this responsibility too. They can multitask and we can get rid of that person who's making this salary. And basically just, you know, it's like being in a recession and you have to do layoffs essentially. And what I think is going on is Sirius is not going to be paying him more every contract. They're going to be paying him less because yes. you look, because they know the listeners, they know the numbers, and they know who's signing up for it and why. Because when you sign up for Sirius, they ask you why. 
Right. And we also know from other people that have had these serious deals, Carrie and I covered it in episode 70 or 71, Marbles, that um, – they could the rich the next contract is for less money unless they've proven that they have doubled there's a constant growth of subscribers due to that show not only that but you also know that when you when you get rid of your subscription they ask you why yep. how many people versus how many people signing up are saying i'm getting rid of it because i had it for howard and now the show sucks so i'm getting yeah. rid of it they never replaced it, already i'm not listening anymore Right. I, I only bought this for Howard and now the show is a complete pile of shit. So right. you have to you know that the head hon shows it's serious, have all this data. They know why people are signing up for it and then they know why they're leaving it. And I, I bet you the numbers of leaving it are because of Howard more so. Yep. That's about it. One more. We're to play a little bit more of this. Be here. You're attacking him. I just asked Gary well, a simple question. Can I depend on you to be here tomorrow? And he just attacked me. You yes, attacked I was, me. It was a full attack. It was. You attacked me too. You're you're a defensive guy. You could have said, will you be able to make it tomorrow? But it's, can I depend on you? No, I said, I said the same thing to Fred. Well, I said the same course, thing to Benji and Shuli. Can I depend on you to be here tomorrow? It, and it insinuates that. I don't think he said that to Fred. He said, are you going to be here tomorrow? Yep. He didn't say depend to Fred, I don't believe. No, he didn't actually. Yep. Not coming in makes me undependable. Gary, you, that's your interpretation. Well, okay, it's an interpretation. No. And I depend on you to be here tomorrow. Gary, can you be here tomorrow? G Gary, yeah. can I depend on you to be here tomorrow? They're two different questions. All right, Gary, can you be here tomorrow? I will do my very best to get here, weather permitting. Okay, can I depend on you to be here tomorrow? Mm. Same answer. But I think you're so asking. One, a, so the, but I think you're asking a different question. I really do. <laughs> I, I do. I think you're. How do I? How do I plan my day for the rest of the day if I don't know who's going to be here? You don't fucking care who's there as long as your peanuts or your fucking almonds are there. Your seat is warmed. Your fucking baby bot. Your baba is ready with all the fucking uh, I don't know fucking French semen in it. I don't know what you drink to keep yourself up. You know he he does nothing for himself. So what does it matter who's here, who's not here? As long as he, you have all the necessary ingredients for your fucking script and whatever guests are coming in. Plus, he just said, I was just who cares if we even do the show? What's right. the difference? Right. He is the one who said it makes no difference. Yeah. OK. Double talk. Double speak. It's honestly it's both like, sides it's of his like, mouth. Like, yeah, completely. And Doug Goodstein nails him on it in the next episode, guys. And we will cover that, uh, I believe. Uh, oh, I good. think next Thank next God. episode will come into it because we have to throw a little uh, wrap up show stuff in there, which is just audio. But uh, where we can come up with video, we absolutely will. Thank you guys I, for I, tuning I, into this episode. <laughs> uh, Sam, any closing thoughts? I, I think um, the last episode we did for this, somebody commented like. Sam, like, because I get so worked up. Like, yeah. could you imagine what I'm, I don't, I'm not like this in like normal. Nobody pisses me off this way. Plus you guys wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, what do you want me to be like? <laughs> maybe <laughs> if you don't act like this, maybe because people know better. <laughs> so, I, mean, I can't, I could have never put up with this. And I, I, all the years, I think of all the people that have been loyal to him and put up with this for yeah. this little amount of money living in yep. New York city. I can't even put up with doing this show sometimes. <laughs> well, and it's listening a to this. Recording of it. Well, I'll have to increase your salary. Um, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> let me just get in touch with the union. All right, guys, we thank you for listening. We love you. Take care. Stay safe. Uh, stay warm. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. I uh, just want to make sure that I could depend on all of you guys to listen. <laughs> yeah. Can I depend cheers. on you? Cheers, guys. You know what I mean? They, yeah. what, for a burrito? Well, they had a problem. I like uh, that we did your they got a whole bunch. No, I knew it was There's your burrito. I knew it was Go ahead, eat. There yeah. it goes. <laughs> Thanks, I don't want it to get cold. There Thanks, you go. Rich. Look who just got happy. <laughs> 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 There's my burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's hungry. That's exactly right. <laughs> it's feeding time. <laughs> Put something in his fucking mouth. <laughs> 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 <laughs>